Hi, if you're new, I'm Kylie, just another Army vet. And in honor of today being India's 76th Independence Day, I thought we'd go ahead and react to an old video clip of the very first Independence Day in 1947. This comes from the channel called Guru Prasad GP. Let's get to it. In March 1947, Earl Louis Mountbatten and his wife Edwina arrive in New Delhi. The Viceroy. The great-grandson of Queen Victoria and second cousin to George VI, Mountbatten brings a regal presence to the drama of India's independence. As the last Viceroy, he bears responsibility for India's fate. Is that Delhi? 2nd of April, 1947. Yeah. I have now completed my first week in office. I should like to be able to paint an encouraging picture of my first impressions, but feel it would be misleading if I did so. The scene here is one of unrelieved gloom. At this early stage, I can see little common ground on which to build any agreed solution for the future of India. The only conclusion I have been able to come to is that unless I act quickly, I may well find the real beginnings of a civil war on my hands. Well, I don't know if you'd call it an actual civil war, but there definitely was a lot of riots and fighting and battles, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that ended up happening anyway, so. By May, attempts to create a unified India have failed. Gandhi retreats from political life. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, leader of the Muslim League, and Jawaharlal Nehru of the Indian National Congress concede to divide India. So who is the man to the right of the Viceroy? I want to say it's Sadar Patel or something, but I'm not even sure who that is. I think he was like the interim prime minister once there was independence. I'm not sure. If someone wants to uh, let me know in the comments, I would appreciate it. Fearing a total loss of control, Mountbatten brings forward the transfer of power to August. Two nations will be created by partition, a secular India and a new homeland for India's Muslims, Pakistan. Nehru addresses the people of India. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny. And now the time comes. Who are those guys right there? When we shall redeem our pledge. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. The 15th of August, 1947, the British Empire in India has come to an end. The last Viceroy, Louis Mountbatten. The flag raising and the salute were done amid scenes of the most fantastic rejoicing. As the flag broke, a brilliant rainbow appeared in the sky, which was taken by the crowd as a good omen. Oh, wow. A rainbow? Qasim Muhammad. Aww. On the 15th of August came freedom. Uh. The freedom to burn, loot and murder. While Delhi and Karachi were celebrating, Central Punjab was burning. Before. That's in Pakistan. Between August 1947 and March 1948, four and a half million Hindus and Sikhs are forced to migrate from Pakistan to India. Six million Muslims must move in the opposite direction. Britons and Indians witness the bloodshed. So I think there is a little bit of a difference there, or I might be wrong, but it was my impression that all the Hindus and Sikhs had to leave Pakistan because they were forced to and they had to actually go settle in India. Whereas 
the Muslims that were in India having to migrate to Pakistan, wasn't that voluntary though? I mean, they weren't forced to do anything. I mean, that was just on their own free will. Am I right? Shahid Ahmed. It is a battleground. People have gone mad. Trains to Pakistan are being looted and occupants slaughtered. We all knew that carnage was in the offing. So did Mountbatten. The British Empire, which tried to build India over centuries, can never live down this great tragedy. Lieutenant Colonel Hubert Boyd Hudson. The sight from the air was awe-inspiring. In this chaos, millions of refugees were struggling to get to India or Pakistan. Thousands of others were doing their best to prevent them, murdering them by the hundred. Why did people try to prevent others from actually migrating? Like, why did they actually kill hundreds or thousands of people? To me, that does not make sense. But death is nothing. There are things more terrible than death. Ten million people are displaced in the partition of India. Ooh. One million are dead. Ooh. What's that building called? By the summer of 1948, most of the British have left. Hubert Boyd Hudson has been in India for 15 years. India is full of ghosts. Houses I have lived in, now inhabited by Indians, remind me of the days which will never come again. When the Viceroy drove past with a cavalry escort in red coats, I have seen the greatness of the British in India, but now it is all ended. The greatness. And we are the last to leave, the few who are trying to tidy up the mess which the sudden splitting of an old empire has caused. Well, you guys caused the mess. Britain has lost its greatest imperial possession. Possession. Mahatma Gandhi once said that if India became free, the rest of the empire would follow. In the next 10 years, the fire of India's independence will spread around the globe, from the Middle East to Africa. So I kind of wish that the video ended on the rainbow because that was such an awe-inspiring image and when I saw it I did almost have some happy tears actually. But then the video all of a sudden took a drastic turn and got really depressing seeing and hearing about all those migrants, the refugees, the killings, the riots, the fires. I mean, that was just really sad. And what kind of pissed me off was listening to the words of that one guy at the end. It sounded like he was trying to make us feel sorry for him and the Brits for having to leave. It sounded like he was trying to make himself a martyr. But I do think that it's good to get that kind of perspective because that was kind of the same perspective that most of the British probably had in 1947, 48 actually. So I am glad they actually included that. But anyway, India has come a long way since 1947. So happy Independence Day, India. And if you do want to watch another video just like this, then here you go. And thanks for watching.